animal tissues. When we breathe, we can actually feel the movement of our chest, can we not? So how do these body parts move? For this, we have specialized cells called muscle cells. The contraction and relaxation of these cells result in movement. Now during breathing, we inhale oxygen. Where does this oxygen go? It is absorbed in the lungs and then is transported to all the body cells through blood. Now why do cells need this oxygen? The functions of mitochondria we studied a bit earlier provide a clue to this question. Blood flows and carries various substances from one part of the body to the other. For example, it carries oxygen and food to all cells. It also collects wastes from all parts of the body and carries them to the liver and kidney for disposal. Blood and muscles are both examples of tissues found in our body. On the basis of the functions they perform, we can think of different types of animal tissues such as epithelial tissue, connective tissue, muscular tissue and nervous tissue. Blood is a type of connective tissue and muscles form muscular tissue. Epithelial tissue The covering or protective tissues in the animal body are epithelial tissues. Epithelium covers most organs within the body. It also forms a barrier to keep different body systems separate. The skin, the lining of the mouth, the lining of blood vessels, lung alveoli, and kidney tubules are all made of epithelial tissue. They have only a small amount of cementing material between them and almost no intercellular spaces. As a result, epithelia plays an important role in regulating the exchange of materials. Types of epithelial tissue 1. Squamous epithelium Squamous epithelium is composed of cells which are thin plates of irregular shapes. Examples Cells in the outer layer of the skin, in the lining of the mouth and nasal cavities. The squamous epithelium protects the underlying parts from mechanical injury, germs, harmful chemicals, and drying up. 2. Stratified epithelium Stratified epithelium is found in the skin and the cornea. It is composed of several layers that is strata of the same or different kinds of epithelial cells. 3. Cuboidal epithelium Cuboidal epithelium, as seen in the figure, is found in some parts of kidney tubules and in some glandular ducts such as those of salivary glands. 4. Columnar epithelium 
columnar epithelium contains vertically arranged cylindrical or brick-like cells. These cells are usually tall in size. Columna epithelium is generally found in the inner lining of the stomach and intestines. 5. Ciliated columna epithelium At some places in the body, such as in the lining of the trachea, that is the windpipe, the columna epithelium is ciliated. The cells of ciliated epithelium have thread-like protoplasmic projections called cilia at their free ends. The cilia constantly keep lashing and move the materials which enter these regions. 6. Glandular epithelium Glandular epithelium, also a kind of columnar epithelium, contains some large cells which secrete certain chemical substances. Such cells are common in the lining of the stomach and the intestine. At certain places in the body, the glandular epithelium is folded inward to form compact, hollow or tubular glands. For example, the sweat glands, tear glands, or the liver. Connective tissue Introduction Blood is a type of connective tissue. Now why would it be called connective tissue? Can you think? Well, the cells of connective tissues are loosely spaced and embedded in an intercellular matrix. Take a drop of blood on a slide and observe different cells present in it under a microscope. Blood has a fluid or liquid matrix called plasma in which red blood cells or RBCs, white blood cells or WBCs and platelets are suspended. The plasma contains proteins, salts and hormones. Blood flows and transports gases, digested food, hormones and waste materials to different parts of the body, which is why it's a connective tissue. Bone is another example of a connective tissue. It forms the framework that supports the body. It also anchors the muscles and supports the main organs of the body, does it not? Two bones can be connected to each other by another type of connective tissue called the ligament. This tissue is very elastic. Tendons connect muscles to bones and are another type of connective tissue. Another type of connective tissue is cartilage. Cartilage smoothens bone surfaces at joints and is also present in the nose, ear, trachea and the larynx. We can fold the cartilages of the ears but we cannot bend the bones in our arms. Think of how the two tissues are different. Areolar connective tissue is found between the skin and muscle, around blood vessels and nerves and in the bone marrow. It fills the space inside the organs, supports internal organs and helps in repair of tissues. Characteristics of connective tissue the connective tissue binds one tissue with another and also connects various organs, keeping them in proper place. It has three characteristics. First, abundance of intercellular substance matrix. 
Second, fewer cellular elements. And third, fibers. Connective tissue proper. One, areolar tissue. A, areola that is packing tissue. It is most widely spread occurring beneath the epidermis of skin. It makes the skin elastic and helps it to withstand pulling strain. Types of connective tissue 1. Fibrous with non-living matrix which contains scattered cells and fibers. 2. Cartilage and 3. Bone with one bone cell enlarged. B. Adipose that is fat tissue. It has specialized cells which store fat. This tissue forms padding under the skin and around kidneys, eyeballs, etc. Padding under skin acts as an insulation for retaining the body heat. C. Fibrous connective tissue. It is mainly formed of fiber forming cells which form tendons connecting muscles to bone and ligaments connecting one bone to another bone. Supportive connective tissue. Cartilage. Cartilage is a non-porous tissue. It has a thickened intercellular substance matrix. It has no blood vessels or nerves. Cartilage is semi-transparent and elastic. Where are they found? Well, cartilages are found in the nose, ears, rings of trachea and bronchial tubes between vertebrae and at the ends of long bones. Bone, blood and lymph. Bone. Bone is a hard, porous tissue. It has a good supply of blood vessels and nerves. It consists of both living cells and a rigid mass of inorganic salts. Blood A. Blood is composed of first, the liquid part, plasma, and second, the cellular part, red blood cells, white blood cells, and platelets. Lymph B. Lymph is the fluid surrounding the body cells. It is essentially the blood plasma that has oozed out of the blood vessels. It contains white blood cells and not the red blood cells. Both blood and lymph are mainly concerned with the transportation and also with immunity that is protection against diseases. Muscle tissue Types of muscle tissue Muscle tissue forms the muscles of the body. The muscles contract and relax. Thus they help the body in its movements. Three kinds of muscles are a. Striated, that is, skeletal, striped, or voluntary muscles. B. Unstriated muscles, that is, smooth, unstriped, or involuntary muscles. And C. Heart or cardiac muscles. Striated muscles. Striated muscles are under the control of the will of an individual. 
the muscles in your arms move about when you want for example when you want to lift a box from the ground such muscles constitute about 50% of the body weight common places to find such muscles are the arms the legs the body wall face neck diaphragm etc unstriated muscles unstriated muscles are not under the direct control of one's will movements of passage of food in the intestine are caused by the contraction of the unstriated muscles in the intestinal walls such muscles are composed of slender tapering cells examples muscles of the iris of the eye and those in the skin muscles found in the lining of blood vessels the urinary bladder and the uterus cardiac muscles Cardiac muscles are involuntary and found only in the heart. The cells here are striated and comparatively short. Unlike the other muscles, cardiac muscles are branched. They can contract without outside stimulation and do not get tired soon. nervous tissues all cells possess the ability to respond to stimuli however cells of the nervous tissue are highly specialized for being stimulated and then transmitting the stimulus very rapidly from one place to another within the body the brain spinal cord and nerves are all composed of the nervous tissue the cells of this tissue are called nerve cells or neurons a neuron consists of a cell body with a nucleus and cytoplasm from which long thin hair like parts arise Usually each neuron has a single long part called the axon and many short branch parts called the dendrites An individual nerve cell may be up to a meter long yes that long Many nerve fibers bound together by connective tissue makes up a nerve Nerve impulses allow us to move our muscles when we want to. The functional combination of nerve and muscle tissue is fundamental to most animals. This combination enables animals to move rapidly in response to stimuli.